Kneel and pray together our novena prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same Spirit to be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Lord Jesus Christ, who have vouchsafed to glorify by numberless miracles the Blessed Virgin Mary, and thank you from the first moment of her conception, grant that all who devoutly implore her protection on earth may eternally enjoy your presence in heaven, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit live and reign God forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, who for the accomplishment of your greatest works have chosen the weak things of the world that no flesh may glory in your sight, and who for a better and more widely diffused belief the Immaculate Conception of your mother have wished that the miraculous medal be manifested to St. Catherine Lavare. Grant we beseech you that filled with like humility may glorify this mystery by word and work. Amen. Memorare. Remember, O most compassionate Virgin Mary, there never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your assistance, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we kneel, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise at our petitions, when your clemency, hear and answer them. Amen. Novena Prayer. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus and our Mother, penetrated with the most lively confidence in your all-powerful and never-failing intercession, manifested so often through the miraculous medal, we, your loving and trustful children, implore you to obtain for us the graces and favors we ask during this novena, if they be beneficial to our immortal souls and the souls for whom we pray. You know, O oh Mary, how often our souls have been in the sanctuaries of your Son who hates iniquity. Obtain for us then a deep hatred of sin and that purity of heart which will attach us to God alone so every thought, word, and deed may tend to his greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial that we recover by penance what we have lost by sin, and at length attain to that blessed abode. We are the queen of angels and of men. Amen. An act of consecration to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. O Virgin, Mother of God, Mary Immaculate, we dedicate and consecrate ourselves to you under the title of Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, May this medal be for each one of us a sure sign of your affection for us and a constant reminder of our duties toward you. Ever while wearing it, may we be blessed by your loving protection and preserved in the grace of your Son. O most powerful Virgin, Mother of our Savior, keep us close to you every moment of our lives 
obtain for us, your children, the grace of a happy death, so that in union with you, we may enjoy the bliss of heaven forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, there lived a family in the remotest part of Australia who made their living as sheep farmers. Their lives were very difficult, and there were times when they were barely able to feed their own family. One day, a stranger happened to pass by their home, a very rare thing in so remote an area. He was a geologist who was headed to inspect some local mines. They had invited the man in for some tea. And as they were speaking, he noticed a rock holding a door to the back of the kitchen. He asked if he could look at it. They gladly showed it to him, saying their father had found the rock some years ago, and it was a perfect doorstop. The geologist looked at it, and as he rubbed it and scratched the dirt off it, his eyes lit up. It proved to be a very rare and valuable black star sapphire. The family was able to sell it for well over $500,000, and their struggle against poverty came to an end. My sisters and brothers, can it be possible that in our own lives, there may be blessings or opportunities that God has given us that are kind of hidden in the corner somewhere or holding up a door somewhere, so to speak, which we take for granted, or which are neglected, or which are unused. One of the greatest gifts without doubt that God has given us is the gift of the Eucharist. And often I feel that because it is so accessible to us, it can be taken for granted. And because it is so familiar to us, we can become numb to its impact. When we hear proclaim the story of the Last Supper, we read about an event that happens in the midst of tension and crisis. Jesus is facing imminent death. Two of his closest friends are about to betray him, and the rest of his friends are about to abandon him. It is not exactly a party atmosphere the way most of us have experienced our own First Communions. And yet, my sisters and brothers, in the midst of all of these very real dynamics, Jesus chose to give us the greatest gift imaginable, the very gift of his body and blood. And by so doing, he lifts us out of the tensions and the crises of our own daily lives to experience the salvation that only he can bring us. By eating his body and by drinking his blood, we become one with him in his own victory over the power of sin, over the power of suffering, and ultimately over the very power of death. And we begin to taste the gift of that new life, which is guaranteed to us by the resurrection of Jesus. Can any of us speak more powerfully of God's love for us? Can any action illustrate more profoundly God's desire to walk with us on our life's journey through all of the ups and downs we experience day in and day out? 
And can there be any better gift that we have been given to share with others than the very gift of the Eucharist? My brothers and sisters, there is no doubt that a basic principle of our spiritual lives is that any gift that we have been given is not meant for us alone. It is meant to be shared. What greater gift do we have to share than the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist? Since the days of Pope Paul VI, the church has consciously put before our eyes the notion of evangelization. We hear that word used a lot. And to say it most simply, we are each invited to share the gift of Jesus' love with those who are around us. Something for us to think about. Who was the last person whom you shared your experience of Jesus' love for you? Who was the last person whom you talked about the gift of Jesus in the Eucharist for you? Who was the last person you invited to come to church with you so that they might experience the same thing you experience when you are here? We who are gathered here today have also received another gift from God, that of the miraculous medal. Is this medal not another sign of God's love for us through the prayers of Jesus' own mother Mary? When we hand the medal to someone, are we not expressing how much God cares for them and wants to accompany them in their daily lives? Is Mary's image on the medal not a reminder to us that God has trampled on the power of evil and that the time of our suffering will one day soon come to an end? The miraculous medal is itself a powerful tool of evangelization. Who does not need to hear that they are loved? Who does not need to know that Jesus' own mother is praying for them? And we can ask ourselves the same questions that we ask when we're speaking about the Eucharist. Who was the last person that you invited or that you shared your experience of Jesus' love for you through the gift of the miraculous medal? Who was the last person to whom you gave the medal? Who was the last person you invited to come here with you to the shrine so that they may experience the same thing you experience? There is a Hindu parable that speaks about a tiger cub that was raised by goats. The goats taught the cub to eat grass and to bleat one night, this group of goats was attacked by a tiger, and they scattered. But the cub stood there and kept bleeding. The tiger roared, why are you here with these cowardly goats? He grabbed the cub by the scruff of his neck, took him over to a pool, and showed him their faces and said, now you know who you really are. He took the cub home taught it to roar, to eat meat, and to act like a tiger. The cub discovered his true self. I'm afraid to say, my sisters and brothers, that so often we Catholics are like that cub. We bleat like goats instead of roaring like tigers. Often we have lost the language of our faith and our appetite to share it with other people. We talk like goats, act like goats, and bleat like goats. But we have received from the hands of God the gift of the tiger, a picture of our true selves. We are loved by a God who feeds us and strengthens us with the very gift of his son's body and blood. We are loved by a God who gives us the gift of the miraculous medal, the gift of a mother's care and concern. As we continue with our Eucharistic celebration today, let us pray for the grace that each of us needs to say yes to these gifts, to use these gifts, and to show our appreciation for them by sharing them with our brothers and sisters with the courage of a tiger. We ask this through Christ our Lord.